The dog of Irina Senderloa, commonly known as Irina Sendler, like their owner, was a hero during war. These two would eventually contribute to the rescue of over 2,500 Jewish children during World War II. Irina was a Polish humanitarian, social worker, and nurse who served in the Polish underground resistance during World War II in German-occupied Warsaw. From October 1943, she was head of the children's section of Zagota, the Polish Council to Aid Jews. Sendler was born on February 15, 1910, in Warsaw, to Stanislaw Henryk Szewanowski, a physician, and his wife, Janina Karolina. Irina likely learned from an early age the importance of humanitarian efforts from her father. She initially grew up in Otwok, a town about 15 miles southeast of Warsaw, where there was a Jewish community. Her father, a humanitarian who treated the very poor, including Jews, free of charge. In 2007, it was speculated that Irina was considered for the Nobel Peace Prize, but ultimately Al Gore was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to obtain and disseminate information about climate change. Irina and her dog were unlikely heroes during such chaotic times. However, Irina's passion for helping Jewish children compelled her to smuggle thousands of Jewish children to safety during the war. Irina had several methods for smuggling children to safety. There were five main means of escape. One, using an ambulance a child could be taken out hidden under the stretcher. Two, escape through the courthouse. Three, a child could be taken out using the sewer pipes or other secret underground passages. Four, a trolley could carry out children hiding in a sack, in a trunk, a suitcase, or something similar. Five, if a child could pretend to be sick or was actually very ill, it could be legally removed using the ambulance. How did a dog help the rescue of Jewish children during World War II? In Methods 1 and 5, Irina frequently would employ her dog to join her and the ambulance driver, as it required that they physically drive away out of the ghetto and pass the Nazi guards. Some had argued that Irina trained the dog when to bark, but details are not clear. What is more likely is that the children would start to whimper, and she feared detection. She would hit the dog on his paw, and he would begin to bark. This set off a chain reaction among the Nazis' dogs, and chaos would erupt. At that point, the Nazis would let her pass. Once on the other side, she would take the children to the home of her friends, the Piotrowski family, where the children would change their clothing and have a chance to eat and rest after their dangerous journey. It was also at the Piotrowski home that Irina would secretly bury her list of names under an apple tree in their backyard. The Piotrowskis lived across the street from a German barrack. Sometimes the children would also stay by another friend, Maria Kokolska, until they could be safely moved to what would be their home for the remainder of the war. She and her co-workers buried lists of the hidden children in jars in order to keep track of their original and new identities. The aim was to return the children to their original families, if still alive, after the war. The names of the saved children I wrote down on thin tissue paper. There were two identical lists in two bottles, recalled Irina. When I once had a list at my home, that same night the Gestapo arrived. Fortunately, one of my liaison girls demonstrated her presence of mind and hid the list in her underwear. After that, for safety reasons, I never kept the lists at home. On 18 October 1943, Sendler was arrested by the Gestapo. As they ransacked her house, Sendler tossed the list of children to her friend Janina Grabowska, who hid the list in her loose clothing. Should the Gestapo access this information, all children would be compromised. But Grabowska was never searched. The Gestapo took Sendler to their headquarters and beat her brutally. Irina was tortured and beaten for several days. One leg and one foot were fractured. Despite this, she refused to betray any of her comrades or the children they rescued. She was placed in the Poyak prison 
where she was subjected to further interrogations and beatings. And from there, on 13 November, taken to another location to be executed by firing squad. According to biographer Anna Myaskowska and Sendler, these events took place on 20 January. Her life was saved, however, because the German guards escorting her were bribed and she was released on the way to the execution. Sendler was freed due to the efforts of Maria Pallister, a fellow welfare department activist who obtained the necessary funds from Zagoda chief Julian Grobelny. She used her contacts and a teenage daughter to transfer the bribe money. On 30 November, Warsaw's mayor, Julian Kulska, asked the German authorities for permission to re-employ Sendler in the welfare department with back pay for the period of her imprisonment. Permission was granted on 14 April 1944. But Sendler found it prudent to remain in hiding, as Clara Debrowska, a nurse. Already in mid-December 1943, she resumed her duties as manager of the children's section of Zagota. After the war, she worked to track down the children and reunite them with relatives, but nearly all of them were by then orphans. Copies were made of the list and given to officers of Zagota, who helped Irina search, but few relatives were ever found. Only 1% of the Jews of the Warsaw Ghetto survived the war. The communist in Poland branded Irina a subversive for her work with Zagota, and she was largely unknown and underappreciated except among the survivors themselves. The children kept in touch with her over the years. Many, including Elzbita, considered her a mother figure and would visit her regularly. It was Irina to whom they would turn when they needed the advice or simply the love of a parent. They were instrumental in having her recognized twice by Yad Vazhem. She was given the distinction of Righteous Gentile in 1965, and a tree was planted in her honor in 1983. Irina traveled to Israel for the tree planting, where she reunited with some of the children she'd saved and enjoyed a visit to an elementary school in Tel Aviv. She even learned some Hebrew in preparation for the trip, but was so emotional that she relied on a translator in the end. After the war, Sendler's first marriage ended in divorce. In 1947, she married Stefan Zagrebski, with whom she had three children, daughter Janka and sons Andrik, who died in infancy, and Adam. After the death of Zemsky, Sendler remarried her first husband, Miroslav Sendler, but their reunion didn't last, and they again divorced. Irina remained a committed and passionate humanitarian worker for most of her life. In fact, it is speculated that her dedication to humanitarian needs was the central cause of much family hardship. Irina passed away on May 12, 2008, and was interred in Warsaw's Pawaski Cemetery, a place reserved for the elite among Poland's artists, writers, scholars, and war heroes. Visitors to Life in a Jar's website report that among the actresses, Nobel laureates, and other heroes, the grave with the most candles is Irina's. It is not known what became of the dog who assisted Irina many years ago. Though the children rescued and their legacies will never forget the risk taken by Irina and her dog.